confidence. What is it? How do people manage to be so confident? Is it their genetic makeup, their upbringing? Is it fake it till you make it? Or is it just pure delusion? Or is confidence actually been completely misunderstood? Using Adam Sandler as our case study, we're gonna to try to unpack that and find those answers today. And I will share with you the one thing I did that made me more confident than anything else I've tried. It's very effective. Hello, my name is Jack. This is Unpack with Jack on this channel. We like to understand the human experience. If you're new here, you're very welcome. Let's go. Colin Quinn, he had a, a club, the Paper Moon. He used to get me on stage. I was going to college around there. And I, all day long, would be practicing on the elevator in my dorm. I'd be going, bah, 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 saying the shit. Right when Khan would bring me up, my fucking head would spin. I'd forget where I was, not make any sense. I would say two jokes, and then I'd be like, oh, my God, I don't, I don't know what's coming next. And I had that going for a while, but I still would go home at night and go, fucking, I'm going to be so fucking good at this. I, I don't know what it was. <laughs> Psycho. Almost psychotic, delusional self-confidence that he had in himself, even though things didn't go particularly well on stage. Why was he so confident? Let's investigate this further. And growing up, my parents literally did everything they could to give me crazy confidence at literally everything I did. School, sports, singing, joking, they acted like I was the best at, at all those things, even though other kids were way better than me. They just always made me feel like I was the star of the family. So he describes coming from a good family that instilled this sense of confidence within him and made him feel like he was a star. That would do it, I suppose. However, in both of those clips, Adam Sandler does acknowledge things had not gone well. In the first clip, he said that his comedy sets hadn't gone well. And in the second clip, he said that his parents made him feel like he was the best, even though he wasn't. So there was part of him that knew he wasn't good in that moment. Is that delusional self-confidence or is it something else? To answer this, let's be nerds for a second and look at the etymology of the word confidence. Where does it come from? So the root word is confidere in Latin, which is con meaning with and fidere meaning trust. So confidence means with trust. Well, this is a very interesting idea. And if you think of confidence more like trust, it kind of changes the meaning because who do you really trust? Sure, if you're going for a tinkle in a coffee shop, you might ask someone to look after your laptop, but who would you really trust with your kids or with your cat? Speaking of cats, if you're enjoying this video, would you consider liking and subscribing for Eddie the cat? Here he is cleaning himself in front of a pair of flip flops for you, hoping that you'll like and subscribe. I think when you truly trust another person, it goes deeper, it goes beyond the specifics of the situation and you start to trust in them, their soul, their being, the essence of them. Let's watch another clip of Adam Sandler talking about one of the first times he did stand-up comedy and how his brother treated him after the comedy set. And let's think about confidence more like a sense of trust as we watch. I went up there, I was terrible, I, didn't, I don't even know what I said. I was like in a fog, those weird fogs you get when you're a stand-up sometimes where you lose your mind. I just kind of was babbling. I remember one guy screaming out, he still has a retainer. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, I left. For some reason on the way home, my brother made me feel like I had the best set of any comedian that night. And he was like, you just got to prepare next time. But they loved you. And in my head, I was like, they, they did? It seems in that example that Adam Sandler and his brother both acknowledged that the actual set didn't go very well, but yet his brother was saying, you'll do better next time and being very positive and instilling confidence or trust. I believe in you irrespective of how tonight went. Now, I think an important distinction to be made here is this isn't just blowing steam up someone's ass for the sake of it. And to illustrate that, let's watch one more clip of Adam Sandler talking about one of the best pieces of advice he got from his late father. One that stands out, I remember he said, you can't always be happy. I remember he told me that one day when I was down about something when I was young. And I said, oh man, I'm upset and blah, blah, blah. And he said, it's all right. You can't always be happy. You just gotta... You know, enjoy when happy comes and know that you're down for a reason and, it's, and you'll eventually get out of it. I think that's such a profound message because what Adam Sandler's dad did in that moment was he abstracted away from the superficial surface level feelings of happy, sad, you know, these fleeting things that come and go. And he talked to something a little bit deeper, something that's more fundamental in Adam Sandler, and that is his self. He said, yeah, you get happy, you get sad, but the thing underneath, the thing that I'm going to love and cultivate and encourage, the self, 
that's the part that is strong and that's the part that can handle these things and that's the part that we can trust and have confidence in. But how do you necessarily get this sense of self-trust, self-confidence if you didn't have an abundance of it when you were young? Well, let me tell you what I did. <laughs> this is something that has really helped with my confidence and that is I performed regularly at open mic nights. Bear with me as I explain this. So I think this essentially works on two levels. The first level is that performing at an open mic in front of people is a direct confrontation with fear assuming that you do in fact find it scary. And once we start to realize that we're actually braver than we think we are, then it cultivates this sense of trust. And remember, trust isn't necessarily knowing the outcome. It's having faith that no matter what the outcome is, we will prevail, ourselves will prevail. The second level is that when you perform at an open mic and you're in front of an audience, it forces you to be intensely present. You're not thinking about tomorrow and you're not thinking about yesterday. I believe that's as close as you can get to your true essence, your true self. The more you can come into contact with that part of us, the uh, pure part of us, you might say, the more we can associate with it and the more we can identify as it. And then of course, the more we can build trust and confidence in that, like Happy Gilmore. What do you think about all of this? Do you trust yourself? Do you have confidence in yourself? Let me know in the comment section below your story. Let me know your thoughts. I always enjoy reading them and then we can all learn more. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. I wanna unpack that with Jack. I'll be right back.